These curious animals have lived in the Amazon for three million years. Although they're most closely related to horses and rhinos, they look more like long-legged pigs, but with a snout like an elephant's trunk. They're tapirs, South America's largest terrestrial mammal. They eat up to 85 pounds of plants a day and can live up to 25 years in the jungle. If they can avoid falling prey to the big cats, caiman and giant snakes that target them. This noisy family of giant river otters has been up since dawn. Don't let these cute faces fool you. These are ferocious killers in their own right, earning them the nickname River Wolves. While hunting, the adult otters try to keep an eye on some lively additions to the family. Their two young pups have just emerged from their underground burrow after two months in hiding. Either pup or adult would make a satisfying meal for a jaguar. But giant river otters are not an easy catch. The adults weigh up to 70 pounds, all sleek and powerful agility. These highly sociable creatures live and hunt in family groups of up to eight members and fiercely protect their territory and each other. They'll mob and potentially kill any predator that dares to attack, including hunters as large as caiman. They'll even attack jaguars. This cat uses stealth to ambush an unsuspecting prey. The otters are enjoying their own fishing expedition too much to notice that they're being watched. It's the dry season and the shrinking river concentrates prey, making for happy hunting. They're fantastic swimmers with webbed feet, dexterous claws and razor-sharp teeth. They mainly eat fish, but they'll try for a young anaconda, the Amazon's largest snake, if they get a chance, or even a small caiman. They can attack from above and below. Their whiskers picking up vibrations, helping them to locate their targets. And their eyes can change shape to improve their vision when moving from land to water. The pups definitely need some practice, even in the fish-rich shallows of the dry season river. The river otter's thick fur coat is so dense, its skin never gets wet. It was this velvety pelt that almost spelled their doom. In the 50s and 60s, they were hunted nearly to extinction. But against the odds, a few tiny populations survived, one of them here in the Peruvian Amazon. They've been steadily recovering ever since. These otters spent half their time in water, but the alpha male slips onto the bank to mark his territory. His huge clawed and webbed feet leave paw prints about the size of a human hand. On the riverbank, he scent marks, leaving urine to signpost the family stretch of river, putting other otters on notice to fish elsewhere or face the gang's wrath. Squirrel monkeys are a favorite meal for a whole host of birds of prey, including the most powerful raptor in the rainforest, the harpy eagle. These birds can weigh up to 20 pounds and have a wingspan of just over seven feet. A female welcomes her mate returning from a successful hunt. The four-inch talons of this huge bird dwarf his prey, an unlucky squirrel monkey. Their nest sits just beyond the Tambopata Reserve in the neighboring Refugio Amazona, where researchers installed a camera 100 feet up in the canopy. 
Scientists have been watching this harpy eagle couple for six months since they hatched their single chick. These raptors pair for life and look after their young for up to a year and a half. They're raising one of the most powerful birds of prey on Earth. Over the past six months, their chick has survived everything from burning hot sun to lashing storms. As she's grown older, they've begun leaving her for up to two weeks at a time while they hunt. They must fly below the forest canopy as the sloths and monkeys they prey on inhabit the understory. With powerful talons, they can crush the bones of victims, instantly killing them. The chicks, six months old and now ready to fly, so free meals will become few and far between. She's starting to display adult behavior, like mantling, spreading her wings over her prey to hide it from other raptors. And she's beginning to look like her impressive parents, with a crown of feathers and darker wings. Soon she'll be vulnerable to poachers, seeking both her meat and her decorative feathers. She must learn to fly. At first, it's perilous. If she goes over the edge, a hundred feet up, she'll likely die. Within days now, she'll have mastered flight and be well on her way to becoming a proficient aerial hunter, just like her parents. Striking fear into the hearts of animals across the jungle. Looking like something thrown together by a disjointed committee, the giant anteater is a hunter who's all about quantity over quality. Ungainly, lumbering, toothless and nearly blind, nothing about this weird beast says fearsome killer. But he's one of the most prolific predators in the jungle. This mass murderer can rack up 30,000 kills in one day. He's over six feet long. With his poor eyesight, he forages for prey using scent. His sense of smell is around 40 times more powerful than a human's. He moves with a slow shuffle, walking on his knuckles like a gorilla to keep from wearing down his four-inch razor-sharp claws. These he uses to rip open an ant mound one of 200 nests he'll pillage today. His whole body is an evolutionary miracle designed around his diet. His long snout can easily probe any nook and cranny, but his tiny mouth can only fit the smallest prey. His amazing weapon, a two foot long tongue, it scoops up harmless worker ants before the stinging soldier ants can launch their painful attack. The tongue has tiny backward pointing spines covered in sticky saliva. It darts inside the mound up to 150 times a minute. He feeds at each mound for less than a minute, careful not to devour all so he can return again and again. One mound down, 199 to go. The Colombian brown tarantula is an expert ambush predator with a ghoulish reputation. This experienced huntress has been honing her grisly technique for more than 10 years, though her kind has been at it for millions. She measures eight and a half inches across and weighs as much as a newborn puppy. She's far too big to hang on delicately spun webs. 
she launches her ambush on the ground. Lurking in a lair high up on the riverbank, she can blend into the brown mud. She has eight eyes, but she's almost blind. So she depends on touch for hunting. The delicate spines on her legs are sensory hairs, letting her know that prey is nearby. They detect the slightest vibration. She spun a series of silken trip wires that run from her burrow to the riverbank. Maintaining her touch on the end of these fine lines, she waits patiently for some unsuspecting creature to trip her alarm system. She's in luck. An injured moth makes a fatal error when it lands close to her lair. The vibrations it makes are like a Morse code menu. The tarantula bites into the moth, using our huge, strong jaws equipped with fangs that are connected to venom glands. She pumps her toxins into the moth's body, along with a mix of digestive enzymes. The lethal cocktail stuns it and dissolves it from the inside while it's still alive. Turning it into pre-digested soup. She wraps the moth up. She'll add it to her gruesome larder, ready for when she's in the mood for a snack. The world's largest ant is busy hunting from dusk till dawn. This little monster can grow to over an inch long. But the really big thing about her is her sting, which packs one of the most painful punches on Earth, often likened to being shot, thus her name, the bullet ant. Unlike the other species of ant, the bullet ant hunts alone. Her usual diet is sugar water, but she needs the occasional protein fix. A caterpillar, another insect, or even an ant of another species will do. Two grasshoppers locked together in a mating embrace would be perfect. Their coupling takes some time to be successful. A sting from the ant will mean certain death. She goes in for the kill. But she's no match for their lightning reflexes. One animal on the forest floor is contentedly oblivious. This giant South American land snail is a mammoth mollusk, measuring a foot long. It's also completely deaf. It has no ears and no need for sound. Instead, it plays the mating game with a different rulebook. Any potential mate will do. It's not fussy, but the only way for it to find another snail 
is to track down another snail trail. This is not an easy world for a creature with just one foot to navigate. Even this giant, one of the biggest snails on the planet, is dwarfed by the obstacles of the rainforest floor. Besides being deaf, it's got pretty poor sight, tiny eyes on the tips of stalks that can retract for safety and unfurl when the coast is clear. Its strongest senses are taste and smell. Lower tentacles sense the way, detecting traces of food and mates. Once it's found another giant snail, its journey is over, thanks to a secret weapon. The giant snail is a hermaphrodite, both male and female. Each individual lays eggs and also produces sperm. If it's lucky enough to find a mate, they'll both fertilize each other's eggs at the same time, producing two sets of new offspring. It still takes two snails to tango, but making the most of every mating opportunity sure helps guarantee success. A neighboring palm is playing host to a far more relaxed creature. A two-toed sloth. Like the monkeys, he spends his life in the trees. But his closest living relatives are anteaters and armadillos. The sloth's pace of life is among the slowest in the rainforest. There's no need for speed. His food is in plentiful supply and within easy reach. Leaves. But while trees encourage fruit eating to spread seeds, their leaves are a different matter. Leaves are their solar panels. In the crowded forest where trees compete for light, leaves are essential to harvest the sun and synthesize food. So, to fend off herbivores, most trees have developed defenses. The most common weapon in their arsenal is to fill their leaves with noxious chemicals. The sloth gets around this by targeting only the youngest leaves, which have fewer toxins. But there's a downside. Young leaves are nutritionally poor, so the sloth must eat almost constantly. When he's not eating, he's sleeping. This gives the four chambers of his stomach time to deal with the toxins and absorb as much nutrition as possible. Sloths have the slowest digestion rate of any mammal. However, the sloth does give something back. Fertilizer. Once a week, he climbs down to the roots to defecate. There's only one other reason this tree dweller will descend from on high. To find a mate. This 82 million year old king of the waterways, older than the river itself, is the Amazon's top water predator. Closely related to crocodiles and alligators, caiman can reach over 16 feet in length and weigh nearly 900 pounds. Baby capybara would make a satisfying snack.
But it won't be an easy catch. Dad is keeping a watchful eye on his only offspring. This hunting machine, on Earth since the time of the dinosaurs, has evolved to be patient. He'll wait for the perfect moment to strike. Although he breathes air, the caiman can stay just under the surface of the water for up to an hour at a time. dropping his heart rate to just two or three beats per minute to reduce his need for oxygen. All the time moving steadily and silently closer to his target. For some creatures, the biggest challenge of dry season is finding somewhere wet enough One of the smallest amphibians in the forest can get into real trouble at this time of year. Normally, this kind of frog can take good care of himself. He's a poison dart frog. He's less than two inches long and weighs under an ounce, but he's potentially one of the biggest killers in the jungle. He eats a diet of poisonous beetles, mites, and ants. Scientists think that they can metabolize and isolate the poisons in their prey, then accumulate them to use for their own defense, excreting them through their skin. The most poisonous of them has enough toxins to kill 10 men. But these toxic tough guys have a soft side. They're dedicated parents. This three-striped poison dart frog is a brand new dad. The female has nothing to do with the eggs once she's laid them. Dad is literally shouldering all the responsibility. These frogs breed year round and this new dad has chosen one of the toughest times to raise a family. His babies are just at tadpole stage. He must find a suitable nursery. He needs a small, fresh pool of water nestled away in a hiding place he can protect that will stay around long enough for his precious cargo to safely develop. But in the dry season, finding the perfect spot is no easy task. And time is running out. If he can't find a location soon, his babies will dry out and die. Luckily, this dad is enterprising. He zeroes in on a leaf on the ground, just enough water to make a sheltered nursery pool. These tadpoles will take around six weeks to develop into fully formed frogs. This dedicated dad will be on guard duty the whole time. If he's timed it right, the next generation of toxic tots should be fully grown and able to look after themselves by the time the dry season is over.
Watsons are 64 million year old living links between modern birds and dinosaurs. At first glance, they don't have much going for them in the survival stakes. Crazy mohawk, blue faces and ungainly movements. These birds aren't fierce or cunning like many other Amazon species. Although they have big wings, they're dreadful flyers, preferring to creep their way along branches. In spite of their apparent vulnerability, they've survived to the present day in healthy numbers, thanks to a unique survival strategy. They stick. In fact, they smell so bad, their informal name is Stinkbird. It's all down to their diet. Unlike other birds, Quatsin's diet consists mainly of leaves. They're vegans, the cows of the avian world. The only birds with this strange diet. The tough, rubbery mangrove leaves are so hard to digest that a single leaf can take almost two days to pass through their guts. Thanks to this, they smell of rancid manure. Their stench is the secret to their survival. Virtually nothing wants to eat them. These curious animals have lived in the Amazon for three million years. Although they're most closely related to horses and rhinos, they look more like long-legged pigs, but with a snout like an elephant's trunk. They're tapirs, South America's largest terrestrial mammal. Weighing up to 660 pounds, they forage non-stop for the huge quantities of vegetation they need to survive. They eat up to 85 pounds of plants a day and can live up to 25 years in the jungle. If they can avoid falling prey to the big cats, caiman and giant snakes that target them. After breakfast, it's time for a dip. Underwater, their prehensile snout becomes a snorkel. Fast and agile swimmers, tapirs can hold their breath for three minutes and even walk on the bottom of the river 